Hi, welcome to another pottery video. My name is Robert. Um, today I'm making two steins. Um, right now I'm using this interesting centering technique that I saw Florian Gadsby, another YouTuber here that does ceramics, uh, used to center quite a large weight of clay. Now this certainly isn't a large weight that I'm throwing here. This one is the larger of two beer steins that I'm actually making, uh, you know, just experimenting with this form and, and trying to see um, what will work, what won't, and if I actually like throwing and using uh, this vessel. Um, so this is going to be larger of two. This is going to be a seven inch tall stein uh, after thrown, but before fired. And then uh, there's going to be a six inch one here. Oh, this um, pull that you just saw into this cone shape, I've been working to perfect that for so long. Um, it's actually, a, for me, a little bit difficult to do because uh, the way that I pull clay, I naturally want to just go straight up into a cylinder. And for uh, things like this, that doesn't necessarily work because with the idea behind this stein is that it's going to have a curve to it. So kind of almost hourglass shape. And achieving that is, um, you know, from a straight cylinder is possible and, and quite easy actually, but it's easier if you have a kind of a pyramid cone shape uh, to start out with. So here I am, you know, just making that pool and kind of cleaning up the surface, getting the initial shape going, uh, making sure that I'm compressing my rim, cleaning up water. You just saw me use a rubber rib to, uh, you know, adjust the form a little bit. And here I'm going in and I'm about to shape for the main uh, flare out for this Stein and I, mess up. A fly just flew into my ear and I flinched. Let's see that again. Ah, man. A fly flew in my ear and I flinched and So that fly, uh, and it, you know, I just lost the rib there. <laughs> I was not in a good frame of mind after that. You know, I may have been smiling and laughing about it and laughing it off, and that's me, my typical response to when I'm angry or anything like that, which, you know, it, it happens. But you can tell, like, this clay is starting to get overworked at this point. And so I am trying to save this form and not try, not have it to throw it again. So I just cut off the rim there to get, get rid of that really bad wobble that's up top. And it's still there, but it's not as pronounced. Um, but I was able to cone in the middle, as you see, and get that flared uh, look to it. So I'm quite happy with the shape overall that, that came of it. Um, and here I'm just gonna be, um, trim up the rim or the uh, the bottom of it, the base, and put a little foot um, on it. Cause what I'm, what I had planned to do was leave the bottom flat, but it, uh, what I ended up eventually doing is um, trimming this a little bit more completely and um, trimming a foot into it. Uh, I may not do that in the future if I make this form again, but uh, for now, that's what I did. So after the form set up a bit, I'm coming over to the work table to pull some handles. And so um, this is a technique where you uh, have a wad of clay uh, that's, uh, that you roll out and then um, you just wet your hands and, and pull it uh, like a milking motion, basically. Um, it's not necessarily that you're you're tugging at the clay, but you're just running your hands over it with 
you know, moderate pressure and um, there's enough pressure and enough motion there that it elongates the clay out. And this is a way to pull handles, a classic way. People use extruders nowadays and which is much easier and more consistent, but this is what I had at my disposal uh, in this studio at this time. Um, I do prefer an extruder just cause it's again, easier, more consistent, but um, I do know how to pull handles. So I'm pulling those handles right now, uh, a length enough to get about three out. Um, and uh, the idea was to try a couple different options here. Um, so this is the smaller of the two that I'm working on right now. Um, I'm scoring the spots where the handles will connect to the body and they're measuring against my hand and what I expect the, the handle size to be. And um, the scoring is is so you, you mar up the surface of the clay that way uh, the, the wet clay that you attach to it can bond to the somewhat dry clay uh, that's already there. So um, that's what I'm doing, just draping it over and shaping it. Here I score the actual handle itself that's gonna be attached and um, add on a bit of water, a little bit of slip, uh, which is just really like liquid clay um, and attach it. And this handle ended up not staying on, uh, not because it wouldn't stay on, but because it, it did not work out. It, did not look good um, sitting there and it, it just was not the direction that I needed to head with it. So here I'm attaching the base and making sure that that's a, he adhered real good. So you can see there down at the bottom edge of the screen, the handle almost like it has this bow in it. So it kind of looks ear shaped. Um, and I figured, okay, well, it will dry out and firm up a little bit, then I can shape it a, a bit better and it'll hold its shape. Um, I'll get back to that here in a second. And this one uh, is the larger of uh, the two Steins and it's the one that I uh, threw in the video uh, section that you just saw. And this, I did stick with the C shape handle, uh, as you can see. So um, that one did firm up enough and I went back and reshaped it a bit and um, it, it worked out and you'll see that at the end. Here, I'm just removing that handle that I had just attached to that smaller Stein and um, you know, it comes off fairly easily considering I had just attached it. So I'm marring up the surface again, scoring that surface. That way I can attach a handle and do a different method of doing a handle. So here I'm getting you know, a wad of clay that I've kind of shaped out a little bit and I'm going to attach that really nicely to this uh, form and I'm going to, you know, embracing that with on the inside with my other hand and, and really pressing that in, making sure that that's adhered. Um, and that's because I'm going to be pulling the handle directly from the form itself. So here I'm doing that pulling technique um, while that handle, that water clay is attached to uh, the, the stein. And this ends up working phenomenally. It's where I should have, the approach that I should have done uh, from the first place. But uh, it, it ends up working out and you can see here I'm shaping that uh, handle there and cutting off I'm just going to squeeze off the excess um, and then I'll go back and shape that and, and clean that up a bit. But that handle looks a whole lot better than that C shape. It's a little bit more elegant. I like it. It's a little bit more comfortable in the hand as well. So um, here I'm just going and making sure that uh, everything's kind of smoothed out. The curve is even on it. It's um, a comfortable curve. And then I take a wad of clay and shape it a bit into this wedge and score it and attach it to the very top of the handle. And what this becomes is a thumb rest. And so um, it is not uncommon for potters to add thumb rest to their handles. It's not something that you find in normally in, um, you know, store-bought uh, 
you know, mugs and stuff, but it is a nice touch. It's very comfortable to use. They're very nice when they're there. And so I'm just going in and cleaning up the, the connection, um, smoothing things over and making sure everything kind of looks seamless. And I'm taking a wooden knife here and, and uh, cleaning up the base of that handle, making sure that everything's squared off and smoothed out nicely. And then I go run over it with the sponge a bit um, to make sure no little bits and pieces are, are left adhered. One final spot check and it's done. So that is the handle. This is going into the bisque fire and will be glazed and fired again later. And then the other stein here is uh, acceptable. You know, I, I do like that handle on it. So we'll see how it turns out. Thanks for watching.